Our future climate could well become some kind of hell on Earth. That was the verdict of mathematical physicist Tim Palmer at the University of Oxford following the release of the UN's new and comprehensive climate report. The 3,000-plus page report from 234 scientists, though, does also offer some small room for hope. Here's what you need to know. Global warming is close to spiraling out of control, according to the sixth report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called a code red for humanity. The report outlined five different scenarios for the planet based on how much carbon emissions are reduced, ranging from a future with incredibly large and quick pollution cuts to a future involving continued increases in carbon pollution. In five previous reports, the world was on track for the hottest scenario, likely to involve temperatures 3.3 to 5.7 degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial levels by the end of the century. However, this time, it's on track for a position between the next two scenarios down, with temperature increases between 2.1 and 4.6 degrees Celsius, because of recent progress to combat climate change, according to one report co-author who spoke to the Associated Press. The problem now is that even those two more optimistic scenarios would see the world failing to beat the 2 degrees Celsius target set out by 197 countries in the 2015 Paris Agreement, and all five scenarios would see the world failing to meet the more ambitious one point. 5 degree target. Going over 2 degrees will see far worse heat waves and flood-inducing downpours, according to the report. Huge damage has also already been done. Extremes such as heat waves, droughts, floods, and storms have become more prevalent, while tropical cyclones are becoming stronger and wetter, Arctic sea ice is dwindling in the summer, and permafrost is thawing. The world is locked in to 15 to 30 centimeters or 6 to 12 inches of sea level rise by 2050, according to report co-author Bob Kopp of Rutgers University who spoke to the Associated Press. Worse still, some of this damage is effectively irreversible. The report says that diminished ice sheets, rising sea levels, and changes to oceans as they have lost oxygen and become more acidic are irreversible for centuries to millennia. Throughout its 3,000-plus pages, the report is clear that both the existing circumstances it describes and the future scenarios it sets out are caused by human activity, outlining how greenhouse gas emissions far outweigh natural contributions to global warming. Temperatures have warmed 1.1 degrees Celsius since the pre-industrial period, and the report explains that this is historically extraordinary, noting that around 125,000 years ago was the next most recent candidate for a period of higher temperature, which was caused by orbital variations. The report ultimately concludes that we can limit human-induced global warming by limiting cumulative carbon dioxide emissions and reaching at least net zero carbon dioxide emissions, along with making strong reductions in other greenhouse gas emissions. As things stand, more than 100 countries have made pledges to achieve net zero carbon dioxide emissions by around 2050, according to tracking site Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. Whether that happens quickly enough to push us down into the better scenarios outlined in this report remains to be seen. But this is what climate change is doing to Greenland right now. Recently, the U.S. has been dealing with the effects of apocalyptic heat waves, but now it's Greenland's turn, with tracking website Polar Portal saying a melting event on Wednesday was the third largest single-day loss of ice in Greenland since 1950. Here's what you need to know. A massive melting event has affected Greenland's ice sheets during a heat wave that has brought temperatures more than twice as hot as seasonal averages, according to Danish researchers cited by Audrons France Press. Since Wednesday, the ice sheet has melted by close to 8 billion metric tons a day, twice its normal average rate during summer, according to tracking site Polar Portal website, which is run by Danish researchers. While this loss of volume was not as extreme as the largest single-day melting event in 2019, the researchers say the area over which melting took place is actually larger than two years ago. The amount of ice that melted on Wednesday alone was enough to cover the whole of Florida in two inches or five centimeters of water, and more than half of that mass will have flowed into the ocean, according to one climate scientist who spoke to Deutsche Welle. The Greenland ice sheet is the second largest mass of freshwater ice on the planet, according to Ajans France Press. It is made up of nearly 1.8 million square kilometers or 695,000 square miles of ice, second only to Antarctica.
A study published in 2020 in the journal Nature stated that Greenland's ice is melting faster than at any point in the last 12,000 years, and a 2019 research paper in the journal Science Advances said that could add between 5 centimeters and 33 centimeters to global sea levels by the end of the century. The heat wave that caused the most recent burst of extreme melting is a result of a patch of high pressure sucking and holding warmer air from the further south over eastern Greenland, according to Marco Tedesco, a glacier expert at Columbia University who spoke to The Guardian. Linking these events to climate change, he added that although these atmospheric events have taken place in the past, they are now getting longer and more frequent. NASA explains that the levels of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere have been increased through the burning of coal or oil, as well as the clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities. This makes the Earth's overall temperature higher, which in turn can cause sea level rise through the melting of ice, like that in Greenland. Worse news still is that this process will perpetuate itself, Columbia's Tedesco told The Guardian. He explained that because the snow on top of these ice sheets operates like a protective blanket, once that is gone, you get locked into a cycle of faster and faster melting. It's amazing to see how vulnerable these huge giant areas of ice are, he told The Guardian. This is, in short, a bad story getting worse. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global mean sea levels has risen in total between 8 and 9 inches, or between 21 and 24 centimeters, since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades. The rate of sea level rise has more than doubled from 0.06 inches or 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 0.14 inches or 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015, and this is mostly due to meltwater from glaciers and ice sheets, as well as thermal expansion of seawater as it warms. A team from NASA has previously calculated that Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets together lost 81 billion tons of ice per year in the 1990s, compared with 475 billion tons of ice per year in the 2010s. This is a six-fold increase. In total, Greenland and Antarctica have lost 6.4 trillion tons of ice since the 1990s. A number of different studies, including one published by the Danish Meteorological Institute, now say this places us at the high end of climate estimates for sea level rises. The action we need to take is clear, according to Tedesco. We need to get to net zero emissions, he told The Guardian, and we need to protect exposed populations along the coast. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.